All right, so we're going to be talking about sinusoidal waves. On the screen here, you have the dotted line is the cosine wave. The solid line is the sine wave. And we're going to compare the domain, the range, the amplitude, and the period of both sine and cosine. And then we're going to move them around and see if we can make a sine wave into a cosine wave and what translations actually do to the wave, what changes the amplitude, what it does to it, as well as the um, period, what it does to it. All right, so right off the bat with sine wave, domain. Domain is the x is how far it goes out left to right. Well, the domain here, even though it stops here on the screen, it just keeps going all the way out to negative infinity and all the way out to, the, out to infinity. So for the domain for sine, it's going to be negative, infinity to infinity because it never stops it starts way over negative infinity and never ends cosine is going to have the same domain from negative infinity to infinity now in class we talked about interval notation the parentheses here means it does not touch infinity because you can't touch infinity we're not it can't be included the range is how tall is it? Well, right here for sine, the maximum height is 1. Down here, this is negative 1. So it's as low as negative 1, and it goes all the way up to 1, and it touches them. So the way we express interval notation for sine, because it touches 1, we're going to use a square bracket, negative 1, comma 1. And on cosine, it's still 1 and negative 1, and it still touches them. So the range is negative 1, 1. Same domain, same range. The next thing we have to talk about is the amplitude. Amplitude is for sinusoidal waves. What it does, it measures how tall it is. But it doesn't measure, measure how tall the entire thing is. You're going to go from your midpoint. And we'll deal with equations later to find where the middle of the equation is to be able to find amplitude. And we just simply want to know how far is it from the middle of the wave to its maximum or from the middle of the wave down to its minimum. It's going to be the same number because you're going to divide that wave in half. Well, the unit circle, which is what these sine and cosine waves are based off of, if you remember from Fettuccini, the radius is 1. Therefore, the amplitude is 1. Whatever the radius of the circle you're using is going to be what your amplitude is. So your amplitude's 1, amplitude's 1, because it's the same for cosine. The period is how long it takes to repeat. What's nice about the unit circle, it starts at 0, it goes all the way back to 2 pi, and then it just starts repeating all the different sine and cosine values. When we did the Fettuccini, you did two full circles, which was two full periods. Sine starts here at 0, and the best thing to do is you can take your finger. You're starting at 0, and you're going above the x-axis. Just trace it with your finger. We're back to the x-axis, but now we're going below, so it doesn't start again. Come all the way up. We're back to the x-axis. It, start, it starts above again. That right there is the end of your period. A standard period, before we start changing things around for both of these, are 2 pi. The domain, the range, the amplitude, and the period are the same for the sine and cosine waves. Now here's the part where trig gets frustrating. There's an infinite amount of ways to write these equations. I'm going to show you by just playing with the graphs here, moving them around, that I can in fact turn this solid line into this dotted line into the same equation, but I'm going to show it to you two different ways. All right, so I have a, a helper here. Can you go ahead and move C to the positive, in the positive direction, and match them up? Okay, so now they perfectly line up. This is technically still a cosine wave. It is still a cosine wave. It didn't change. But if you look right up here, You see that it, my dotted line, which we can't see anymore, is just 1 times cosine 1x, which is just cosine x. 
but it's also sine of x minus 4.7. Well, that's just the way I did the program here, but it's really what we're doing is called a phase shift, which we'll learn later on. Now, this is one of the equations. Now, help her move it the other direction to negative. You notice how this number is changing, keeps changing, and it will eventually match up. Go the other way. And it matches up. So now it's plus 1.6. It's still a cosine wave. But here's the interesting part, is once we start moving these waves, I don't know if it's a cosine wave or a sine wave. You don't know. You get to pick and choose which one you want to use. And then you start talking about how you moved it around from the basic graph, from the, what's called the parent function. Now, this is still cosine wave. Sine x plus 1.6 is approximately the cosine wave because they line up. You can see that. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to do a translation. We're going to move it up. On your prop, in your springboard, try these A. Actually, as you do cosine of x plus 2. That means the graph's going to move straight up 2. So go ahead and move D to positive 2. If you notice when this was moving, nothing else changed besides its vertical location. It didn't shrink, it didn't shrink, it didn't stretch, it really didn't do anything. All it did was move straight up. If it goes negative, move it down to the negative, it just moves straight down. This is what's called a rigid motion. It just moves it. The wave itself, the shape, nothing changes. It just changes location. Keep going. A little faster. There we go. So really, moving it up and down, left and right, it didn't change the shape or anything along those lines. Now, Alex, can you put this back to D, back to zero? We're going to start playing around with the amplitude. But when you play, when we play around the amplitude, I want you to pay attention to your x-intercepts of this wave. And see what actually happens. So Alex, do me a favor on A. Go all the way up to 5. Just go real fast. Now if you noticed, these didn't change their location. Your x-intercepts didn't change one bit. But your maximum and minimum sure did. It went from 1 all the way up to 5. Over here, we'll learn later on that the number in front of your trig identity, your trig function, sine and cosine, is going to be your amplitude when you take the absolute value. Alright, go ahead and take A back to 1, please. Alright, now, we're going to play with what we call the period. How long does it take to repeat? But this time, I want you to pay attention to your maximums. There's a maximum line right here at 1. And right down here at negative 1. So, Alex, on B, make it, uh, just move it, I don't care. Keep going. Go to a different number besides 1 or negative 1. Now you notice what's happening. It's not getting taller, up or down. But what's actually changing are your x-intercepts. Move it again so you can see the x-intercepts, they move. The x-intercepts move, but it's moving right along these dotted lines that I've put on here. It doesn't change the height, it only changes the x-intercepts. Doesn't even really change. Just the height doesn't change at all. So, this is basic transformations with sinusoidal waves. We're going to learn a lot more about this. This is just a real brief, not even really brief, introduction to it.